And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some mid-range frostbite. Uh, this is just a, a great deck. We played a version of mid-range frostbite yesterday and it did well with it. Um, you know, this is just just a, an old classic, um, something I've been playing for a long time. Ever since Sejuani came out, the day one of Sejuani coming out, we were playing uh, this kind of deck with Ash Sejuani, Hearthguard Assessor, you know, all that kind of stuff. So we've been playing mid-range Frostbite for a long time. Nothing new with this list. We've played this exact list ever since Troll Chant came out. Played this a few times, except for one card change. Uh, we have always played three Babbling Bjerg. I'm going to take out the third Babbling Bjerg, and I'm going to put in one Captain Farron at the top end. Kind of help a little bit against the decks that our, heart, that our Frostbite cards aren't as good against and help against like your, your Trundle Trindomir decks of finishing the game out. I think that's going to be okay for us. So let's see how that goes, um, replacing one Babbling Bjerg with a Captain Farron, just to have some extra power in there. Um, but yeah, not too much to say about the deck. It's been around for a while. We're going to be going with a whole bunch of Frostbite, which I just feel like Frostbite cards are awesome. So a bunch of frost Frostbite and some Culling Strikes, some Reckonings. Lots of power here. One thing this deck can struggle with are the super aggressive decks, like your discard aggro kind of decks. And so taking out Babbling Bjerg for an 8-drop does hurt that matchup a little bit. So Sejuani, like Sejuani's good against Gen Fiora. Sejuani's actually pretty good. So I have nothing on turn two or turn three, but we have draw steps. Oh. These woods protect their own. So we have draw steps. Intruders. So when they're gonna have Fleet Feather Tracker. Don't usually play anything that costs two mana in their deck, except for maybe like single combat. For glory, you are mine. I grow. We'll take that. So now even if they like play another thing, like and then have Fleet Feather Tracker challenge Glory Seeker. I've got your back. Oh. I was going to say that we got a, you know, like, we still got a two-for-one, but no, it's just going to be a one-for-one one now. Remember me. All the world on one arrow. Yeah. Right, Seal Protector was bad. I long for a worthy opponent. Yeah, this is going to be the last deck today. We're going to be playing five games with it. You can see the, the schedule and everything in the top left, our, our results, all that kind of stuff. We fight for one frail yard. For the honor of House Laurent. Try me. I find them unworthy. Let them eat swords. Oh God. Honor guide me. And I want to make this block. I want to get my 1-1 one, one out of here so Fiora doesn't get easy challenges with it. I like that draw. You know, so this is basically a, a six mana card that forces them to cast a barrier card this turn, day whether they want to or not. We walk between realms. All right, so Shen's about to level up. That is good as well. I sense an imbalance. For the honor of House Laurent, try me. Prepare for battle. Our wills align. This is our homeland. All 
All right, so then more barrier cards come, because each barrier card will add the plus three, plus zero. So we want to be able to harsh wins after that. Oh, no, no other barrier cards. Okay, we'll take that trade. Justice will be served. So right now, Assessor draws one card. I guess that's better than just wasting all this mana. Only the finest serve. I guess it's better. But not 100% it's better. Alright, Captain Theron. Is attacking worth it? Probably, right? Try to think of like why it's how attacking with Captain Farron would not be worth it, and I can't really think of a reason. So what are we worried about? Like Bright Steel Formation coming in next turn? Concerted strikes with repose. Face me, coward! Counter and strike! Stay back! They're still at 20. I never hold back. Oh god. Ready weapons. This would be kill number two for Fiora. I know a challenge when I see one. I guess that's okay. So now Fiora will be a 4-2. I mean I could just throw the coaling strike here. Might as well. We don't have to just cast all these decimates right now. I was kind of thinking of like calling strike for Radiant Guardian, but we also have like harsh winds and stuff. No, Fiora's not broken. No. Yeah, it's still an awesome card, but I wouldn't say Fiora's broken. Doing too bad. For the yeah, another Radiant Guardian. They're not they're honestly not doing that bad. That was dumb. I should be attacking first. I don't know. I was basically planning on I wasn't really planning on attacking here, basically. Like, I think I just pass. Yeah, I think I just pass. That's why I just played the Decimate. Yes, so glad that I passed and did not do anything else. Draw four. We'll take that. Alright, another Decimate. GG. So the the problem with attacking with the nine two was they could just use a you know block use a barrier card and but yeah those are those are cards you got to be worried about and everything. All right, we could keep Icefield Archer. I'm gonna Mulligan though. We'll keep one Brittle Steel. Yuck. An ugly looking hand. Ugly looking hand. So yes, I could play Ice Veil Archer, but I'll just save it, especially with having these reckonings. Just gonna hold on to it. Faster than my arrow? I think not. Not sure if I'm supposed to be playing Babbling Bjerg instead. With a little time, I'll have a breakthrough. The skies darken with their approach. 
Man, they are going to have some cheap dragons. No, not the challenger dragon. Did not want to see that one. Pass to me. Pass to me. No, I mean like play another dragon. Yeah. Please work. No. Too bad. That would have been awesome. Shroud the world in wings. A true Felionian welcome. They can have a. They can still play like a four mana dragon here with no mana. <laughs> they played two mobilizes, two herald of dragons. They have no mercy. It looks scary, but the thing is, is they have like no cards left in hand. I'll protect the villages. As foretold. Alright, we'll just play Avaros and Hearthguard. Start buffing up the things in our deck, especially Trifarian Assessa. They had all the Screeching Dragons. Okay, one one Screeching Dragon was created by Egghead Researchers. They they had two regular, and then this one was created there. So they could have another. Passing. I'm going to just take the pass. Okay, I guess that was the problem taking the pass. Eight, 12, 16, 17, 18. I like this. Even like Pale Cascade, I'll take that. Because then I can Brittle Steal this thing. I guess they're worried about, because this puts them down to seven if they don't that they don't really block and so they're worried about all these decimates if they're if I'm able to stay alive so i guess it, it does kind of make sense for them to block so they have 18 power in play playing this means i get to draw a card Let's put them down to 17 power in play What a great draw. A chill in the air. So now I don't have to worry too much about dying. Could play Harsh Winds, but alternatively, we don't have to. We're going down to six. Feel pretty safe at six. And then, yeah, let's go with the Reckoning. <clears throat> so that went well. Still puts them at negative one. So puts them at negative one. And GG's. That looked scary there for a minute. But mid-range frostbite is still too good. GG's. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Mulligan, Mulligan. Tom Kent, Shiraka, not Mulligan. Um, Babbling Bjerg. I guess we Mulligan. Wow, love Reckoning. 
Can we set up Glory Seeker plus Reckoning? It'd have to be Reckoning on turn four. They're out there. I'll spot them. In Avarosa's name. Feel pretty good about this one. Double cooling strike and a reckoning. Feel pretty good about this. I need just a moment. So yeah, we could have reckoning next turn. Yuppie! I talk to spirits. These are my rules. I passed, they probably passed two. Yeah, they passed two. They don't want anything to get challenged. Pablo's been down, but his knee out! Ah, I told your ancestors to protect! Cool. So do I want to use Troll Chant? Like if they challenge here, am I using Troll Chant? Or Brittle Steel? Oh, you're all so cute. We're all family here. Alright, so the answer is neither. We want to keep on killing these things that can get that are damaged. For glory, you're mine. Arrows at the ready. Probably casting cooling strike this turn with whatever else they play. There's always room for supper. Like that thing. Cool, no pale cascade. We would have had troll chant to counteract Pale Cascade. So it looks like we're pretty good from here. Pablo's been down. Let his knee out. Our strength is yours. By the power of the stars. All right, so they could have that with... No, I guess Bastion doesn't save them because we still troll chant also. Fine. Born for conquest. I'll cut them apart. Face me. Leaping into action. So put them down to four. All right, and I while I can't troll chance, um, I think I just let the Trifarian Glory Seeker die. I think that's okay. Yeah, because, like, the Glory Seeker doesn't actually kill either of their champions. Um, yeah, so I think I think we just let that happen. And next turn, you know, start going Captain Theron. This matchup looks really lopsided from the little bit we've seen. I see face of your future. Looks pretty lopsided. No desire. Okay. So they get to heal a couple more. So now they're at 12. They still gotta get to 22. Let us peruse this establishment fair. And I don't know if they'll be able to get to 22.
Probably not. Fourteen, almost there. Where there's a will, there's a meal. GG's. All right, three now. Okay, so this is something that can, can uh, be a little bit more of a struggle, a deck that can be, uh, you know, hyper aggro. Super fast, go wide real fast. This can be more difficult for us. Mulligan the Culling Strike, because it's probably trading down on mana. If we're probably killing something that costs less than three mana with it. I'm really looking for, like, Omen Hawk. Right. No Omen Hawk. We have kind of the opposite. Like, the Keg Control wants to see this kind of deck. We don't want to see this kind of deck. I pull the strings. A chill in the air. Good Ice Phil Archer. Holding back Elise. Um... I could go Glory Seeker and challenge, like Glory Seeker, Brittle Steel, but I think it's better to go Trapper and because the earlier that we can get the one mana Enraged Yeti, that with the with the one mana Enraged Yeti um, being able to help us double spell, that lets us double spell. I think that the earlier we get that, the better. strike that. Maybe using Brittle Steel this turn on the Arachnoid Horror. Glitched. We can't block either of these. So instead of taking seven... Instead of taking nine... Yeah, probably just gonna go Brittle Steel. Yeah. This could also just play Glory Seeker, but that's one mana gain four. <clears throat> that's probably worth it. We fight for one frail yard. Hot on the trail. Need to be a wor little worried about another frenzy skitter, but we do have the reckoning. I know what lurks in the shadows. Mm. That's also scary. As silk. Hopefully, we get to reckoning. No, it doesn't look like it. Seven, go to eight. I don't want to take seven, go to eight. We'll take five. So you're worried about decimates and the Imperial Demolitionist and um, what did we catch? the three two Nightfall card, all those things draining me out. So we'll just take, you know, like. That's probably the last time they're doing combat damage to me. Like, I don't... Right? Like, the, the rest is probably just going to be... Victory requires a sharp uh, blade. Nexus damage. It would kill us. Coming in hot! And so that's probably the best time to be using the troll champ.
That's... Yeah, so they, they had to do that to stay alive. But that's a lot of Nexus damage that's not coming towards me now. So that's definitely good. But yeah, so they use that other Nocturne Fervor over here to stay alive. So we're at six. No one's the wise. So I can get two blockers by going Trapper and Assessor. Let's lead with Assessor. The right to call themselves Trifarian. Good. The Troll Chant. There you go. Doom Beast. Yeah, that card. Got two blockers for those two right now. Two for two blockers. Never see it coming. Damn it. The trap is set. So do they have the third at Noxion Fervor? Or a Decimate? One of these two cards is still the ephemeral version of one of these. Yeah, like the ephemeral Doom Beast. We know one of those two cards was that. Alright, GG's. That was close. Down to one. That was real close. Oh, man. And we get to finish out with this matchup. I'll feel real bad if we lose this game. This... Seems like this should be an awesome matchup for us. Uh, we do want to find our Culling Strikes and Reckonings. So mulligan to everything else. Kept the Omen Hawk. It's just a really good turn one play. But just mulligan the rest of those cards. Yeah, all about those Culling Strikes and Reckonings. We played it last time and we had, what, three? We had a Reckoning and two Culling Strikes. It's like three total of those cards. None this time, though. Oh, I don't care about two damage. Okay. That's a start. Table for one, if you oblige. I could brittle steal that and have. Oh, I should have, because then Tom Kench is now a 4-8. I needed to, to make it a 2-8. Oh, that's my bad. I'm sure I forgot. Oh, man. Okay, well. 5-3 Ice Field Archer is good. Many tribes under one banner. So going with this first... Because, you know, like, if they want to swallow it, then maybe we get the Hearth Guard back. But now next turn, I can have Ice Veil Archer plus Brittle Steel plus Reckoning. I can have all of that next turn. Especially, like, if they swallow the Hearth Guard, then the Tom Kench will be able to be Brittle Steeled. Excuse my impertinence. I need is the astral protection. I need to use my brittle steel. I was just overconfident and not thinking and, and starting to say say that I could and then realized that I needed to. Allow me a small sample. All shall drown in my magnificence. Yeah, mess this game up. Bastion still saves saves their Tom Kenj. From nothing. I desire a different flavor. 
Okay. So we'll have one five three in play. Leaping into action. We'll be able to play another five four and and assessor next turn. To draw two. I'll find that narwhal yet. You can see the Nebastian border from here. All right, we'll let that happen. I guess I want to play Ash first before Assessor to draw an additional card, make it a draw three instead of a draw two. Yeah, and I had the two Brittle Steels, but yeah, that, that was a better use of the Brittle Steel. Calling Strike? Yeah. Got some calling strikes. My arrow won't miss. I'll do it myself. Swiftly now. Show them the way. Alright, we'll play this first. At the ready. They get to kill Ash, but that's okay. We got a ton of cards. That's okay. You did good, Ash. And saving Culling Strike for the champions. I don't need to use it on the zero one, especially when holding Brittle Steals. Uh, Trifarian Assessor is our best draw step. We'll draw another one of those. Yeah, we did it. We didn't have. He said we won this with no calling strikes. I mean, we did have reckoning earlier, and reckoning is a beating. The problem with this is we're putting. You know, we are putting one. From the um, we are putting one man in rage yeti on top of our deck, which is awesome. But we don't really need one mana in rage yeti. Born for conquest. In Avarosa's name. Hot on the trail. Come about. No escape this time. Come about. And I'm down to two. So you got a troll chant, save my five five. Meh. We need space. Anyway. Take that. No more of your crap suit lost, please. It's that soap. You'll be thinking this. Harpoon him. So we're looking good. Bring the fucking bell. Where are you off to? Should have stayed home, pal. Pablo's been down. There is no out. Ah. I told your ancestors to protect! Alright, what do you want? How do we want to do this? Let's use the Harsh Winds? Keep things alive? Could do that. GG's. And then I was looking at that as thinking that probably just play the two calling strikes and just kill two more blockers and just attack and kill them. Because I'm being at two and everything. Probably just want to do that. Alright, so there we go. Mid-range Frostbite with the 5-0. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just a perfect rank up Sunday deck for me. I like the Captain Farron change, putting that in over the third babbling Bjerg. I think that change ended up being pretty good.
So I think that was that was a good change. Um, yeah, these cards are just awesome, and this is just a, a deck I'm super familiar with. I can I can just pile it very well. Um, yeah, just just uh, I think this is an an awesome deck, and be confident winning winning quite a bit with this one. So <laughs> yep, it's still good. Um, all right, uh, but those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd really appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching some mid-range frostbite, and I'll see you for the next video.